Hi. How are you? And don't lie to me. I'm a YouTuber. We can tell. We can always tell. We got that sixth sense uh, influence. My name's Drew Monson. If you've never been here before, this is my second channel. Well, this is my closet, but this is a video on my second channel where I just let myself talk and I try not to edit the video, but sometimes I do. And you'll see. Hopefully, I, I'm going to try not to for this video. And maybe that'll make it boring, but whatever. I have two different stories to tell about celebrity interactions I've had recently, kind of. We'll see what happens. I hope you're doing well for real. If you're not, by the way, I do have an idea. Okay, try this. Do me a favor. Open up your Spotify app. I'll give you a second. Thank you, sweetie. Type this in. This is important. 21, and that's the words, not the numbers. Pilots, hit shuffle, close your eyes, and just let whatever happens happen. Um, my therapist recommended this treatment to me last week, and I was hesitant at first because I'm not super into like alternative kind of new agey medicines, but when I tell you I went from zero to hero that night, when I tell you I went from I don't have a son to Pete David's son, when I tell you I now have a son named Pete and he means a lot to me, <laughs> Uh, anyway, I'm gonna start the story. I'm, I'm nervous though. One second. Okay, sorry, I'm back. I, uh, went to work really fast. I'm a chef, by the way. Have I brought that up before? I can't remember. I chef on the side. I work at Denny's. I make the milkshakes only. They won't let me near anything else. They said I ruined one too many chicken strips, was their quote. And the barbecue sauce somehow, which is strange because all you have to do is squirt a little bit into a tiny cup. I couldn't even pull that off. So now I'm a Denny's milkshake chef, sweetie. Wait, for real, is that a bird? Is there a bird behind me? Is there a bird behind me? Is there, I know I'm being annoying. Here's where the first story starts. I'm addicted to this podcast um, hosted by this comedian. It's not even that popular, but it means everything to me. There's like 1,100 episodes. They're each like two and a half hours long. I'm not even exaggerating. I've probably heard all of them at least four times. I don't know if you have anything like this in your life where once you're done with your binge, you're just like, let's take it again. Episode one. I'm not done yet. I imagine an entire audience chanting, encore, encore. I see it as a performance. But instead of like picking up a guitar, I'm just hovering my finger around a play button like, are y'all ready? You know? And also my like early onset smartphone, smartphone Alzheimer's that I imagine you have too, works in my favor. I don't know if you're having this experience where like, I kind of hate it because I can't remember anything, but also I get to enjoy everything for the first time again like a little baby. People will be like, have you seen this movie? I'm like, honestly, it doesn't matter. Have you been to this beach? Could be, I don't know. The rocks will appear new to a brain like mine, I'll tell you that much. But anyway, I saw that the comedian was performing kind of nearby. I'd have to drive there, which I don't have a license, so I asked my dad to drive me there, which if you have a problem with me asking my dad's for ride, my dad for ride place, uh, unsubscribe. I tried so hard with that sentence and not all of them work out. I'm sure you've tried to talk before and it didn't happen, right? So try and say something. See, that didn't sound real. Anyway, oh God, I hate myself. One second. Okay, sorry, I'm back again. Honestly, I had to go and uh, make another milkshake. It's the only thing that makes me feel whole anymore is producing a watery vanilla for my customers. Honestly, I haven't been doing great. I don't feel funny or interesting or beautiful right now, but I want to tell this story and I'm going to try my best. So I went to this comedian show and I had seen him a, a few times before, which was intense as well. Like, I don't know if you've ever been in the same room as like a celebrity or a, a band or whatever that you're obsessed with or you've been obsessed with for a long time. Like, I remember the first time I saw the band Guster, who I was obsessed with like since I was nine years old. And when I went to their concert when I was 12, that moment where they walked out onto the stage and I was like, it felt like I entered another universe. Like I'm in the same building as them right now. That doesn't make sense. Like if I screamed, they could hear it. You know what I mean? Like if they looked at me, I, I always think this, like if they looked at me and we're like, we talked, they could go off and like think about me later. Like they could have a dream about me. They wouldn't. It's weird for me to think that, but it's what I, like seeing a celebrity, it almost, I almost would compare it to like, if you saw a, a dead body wake up, like if you were looking at a casket and like the eyes opened, it'd be like, wait, that's not supposed to happen. Does that make any sense at all? It's just a strange thing. 
And that's how I always feel. So I went to the show. I put on like a nice shirt and a, my beanie, of course. And by the way, nice shirt for me just means there aren't that many stains on it. There's only animal fur on it. And I'm not talking cat or dog. I'm talking boar. I'm talking wild boar. I make milkshakes and I, one second. And I was nervous because like this comedian, he interacts with the crowd a lot. So there is a chance that like he will talk to you. Like I've seen him before and he'll like point out a couple and like ask how long they've been together or whatever. So of course I'm like going over it in my head. Like, okay, what is, what am I going to say if he talks to me? Maybe he won't, but this was like a small room. Like he was doing, there was only like 50 seats in this room. So like there was a one out of 50 chance he's talking to the Monson. You know what I mean? And I'm thinking he'll ask where I'm from. I'll say that I had my dad drive me here because I love you so much. He'll be like, why don't you have a license? I'll be like, I've got problems. And he'll be like, that's fine. You're charming. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm mapping it all out in my head. And the show happens and he's talking to everyone around me. Like he's talking to this group of people right next to me. So I knew he saw me. Like it was, I knew it was going to happen. And there was like 10 minutes left. I could tell like it was about to run, we were about to run out of time. I was like, okay, he didn't, I kind of wanted him to, but I was still scared. Cause like, I don't like being made fun of, even though I like making fun of people, which is just a, a, a cruel fact about me that I, I can dish it out very well, but I can't even come close to taking it. And I'm working on it. And I've also been saying I'm working on it for like uh, 17 years and I haven't worked on it cause I would have, it would have been better by now. But anyway, finally, he looks at me after talking to someone else. He looks at me like in the eyes for like a few seconds. Like everyone else, he just like talked to them and said something. He just like stared at me. Like for so long that I almost thought he was a, a, a subscriber to Drew Monson number two, which would be crazy. At that point, I would just smash my drink on the ground and go Rah! like a wild boar. See, it was funny. I told myself that bringing up a wild boar wasn't funny. I did have a dream, the, I'll remember where I was in the story, but I, I have to tell you this. I had a dream that there was a wild boar in my childhood back. I have so many dreams about my childhood backyard and different wild animals running around in it. And I always think about Googling like, what, what does that mean? But I know it, every dream interpretation website says the same thing. It says, there are new amazing things coming or you're moving away from your feelings about your parents or there's someone in your life who is like lying to you and you shouldn't trust them. It just, they make it so vague. So you'd be like, oh my God, yeah. Cause everyone has someone that's lying to them. We're all lying to each other. My name's not Drew Monson. Who are you? So he looks at me and he says, are you wearing a hat? I swear that's what he said. Are you wearing a hat? And I'm not, I'm not trying to be like quirky, relatable, anxious guy. I was like immediately like, I immediately didn't want this to happen. And also, if you're not like up to date with my like current insecurities, I'm wearing a hat right now and I was then because my hair is thinning and it makes me uncomfortable. And like, of course, like once you get to be a 27 year old guy and you're never seen in public without something covering your hair, the secret's out. Like, what are we even doing here? Why are we playing this game? Just show us the hairline. But you know, I don't, I don't, I also don't want you to experience it. And I, I have a hard time with that. So this was really the la all the scenarios I went through in my head. I did not think it was almost like someone handed him a paper before the show and was like, the guy in the third row is balding, ruin his life. He goes, are you wearing a hat? Again, this is all overthinking. All he said was, are you wearing a hat? And I just go, yeah. And for some, I said it in like a really low voice because he kind of asked the question in a low voice. So I thought it would be funny to like mimic him. For some reason, I thought I was going to get a laugh. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where like you're doing a school project and you're like, this is going to be funny. People are about to laugh at me. I thought that me going, yes, was going to like, everyone was be like, ah! Like, he should get on stage! And the comedian would be like, listen, man, I'm the one getting paid tonight, but that was classic. You got the job. So I go, yes. And he goes, he looks at me for like a couple more seconds. He goes, can I ask why? I'm like, are you serious? Is this really happening? You're, you're grilling me on my beanie. And I go, I, all I could come up with to say was, I prefer it. I, I, I just prefer it. And I'm not kidding, it, it hadn't been that silent the entire night. Because clearly, like, this wasn't, 
Because <laughs> there was no like chemistry here, nothing interesting was happening, and he just looked at me for like three. He didn't smile. He didn't. He didn't go. Oh, that's. And I don't even know what that means. I prefer it. I prefer it to not. I mean, he was asking. I imagine because it was you know eighty degrees in there and a hundred degrees outside. I kind of feel like he should have known. But get this. Here's the kicker. He moves. He looks at me again, <laughs> deep into my soul decides to move on, starts talking to someone else in the audience, and says, references my conversation with him from just a moment ago, and says, ma'am, I'm a, to someone else, to some lady, he goes, I'm a, prof I'm a professional comedian. You can tell because of that riveting conversation I just had with that woman. Meaning me. My favorite comedian called me a woman. And listen, <laughs> this is a weird thing that's been like, I'm not joking, like, I was called a girl a lot, like, in middle school, like, almost every day, it was like, are you a girl? And it kind of felt like they knew I wasn't, but they were kind of trying to mess with me by saying, like, you look like a girl, you look like a girl. And then it kind of just stopped happening, like, I guess I went through enough of puberty, like, in high school, like, it became clear that I'm not a girl. But the past, like, 18 months, like, She's back. I don't know. It like just when I thought she was gone, she creeped up from right around the corner and I'm a girl again. I don't I think my voice has gone up an octave. Maybe I've been more nervous. I don't know. Like maybe my I've always thought that I had pretty eyelashes. That could be part of it, right? That's t that's glass half full. My tattoo. People think that my tattoo means glass half full, which it's literally 3 fourths full. I should, this tattoo has a meaning to me, but the fact that people will go, ah, glass half full, you really think I'm gonna get a tattoo based on the dumbest cliche anyone's ever heard? Anyway, he called me a woman. I look at my dad, I'm like, did he? Because it immediately brought me back to like, there was this horrible time, in, I think it was senior year of high school, my, like, halfway through the school year, my art teacher in front of everyone, it was weird because she was like, this is just the one that sticks out, it's happened a lot, but she was complimenting me and she was like, guys, look at, look at hers. She, because you see the way that she used the paint? This is what you guys should be doing. And it should have been like a good moment, but everyone was like, that's true. He's not a, not a female. Email. Uh, so this that that was hard and that that's pretty much the story. I walked out and I felt I felt really like this real shame feeling like I, and then I started getting in my head it wasn't even because when someone calls me a girl it's not about if it happens one-on-one -on -one with like where an uber driver is just like you're a good person ma'am which has happened before because I am a good ma'am I'm a good ma'am and I'm a, I'm a bore too I keep trying to make the bore thing work um, if it's with just one person, I don't care. But when other people are there, then I start thinking about their perception of the mix-up and them laughing at me. Like, I don't mind just correcting somebody. I was thinking about that the other day. Like, there was a grocery store, like, the person bagging my groceries or whatever, and she was having a conversation with me. She was, like, talking about, she goes, hey, I have those headphones, too. Did you, did you she said, did you know that you can buy replacement pads for them on Amazon? Which is really the most interesting thing a grocery store worker has ever said to me and honestly I want headphones are like my passion like I so badly wanted to conversate with this woman about headphones and be like don't you feel like the little voice that says power on talks too much because if you disconnect a device I feel like I don't have to hear about it I know I disconnected the, the device you don't have to tell me but I couldn't say any of that and I realized when I walked away it's not because when I'm one on one with someone that's fine it's the fact that I thought the other people around at the grocery store would hear me interacting and that's what would be cringy. Like, I, I'm constantly focusing on when, when I get recognized in public. Doesn't happen a ton, but when it happens, all I'm thinking is about the people who are rolling their eyes going, this guy thinks he's somebody, doesn't he? He's no one. No one even knows his gender. But you know. Anyway, I have another story about celebrity. What did you think of that one? Interesting or not, let me know. But if you tell me it's not, I'll get mad at you. So that's a trap, don't fall for it. Okay, you know how the new Jurassic Park movie just, I need to open, I'm in a closet with the door closed. Watch this, look at that. That's called a natural fan. And men, we have the ability to do that. We can make a powerful fan with just our little hands. It's quite beautiful. And we can also make uh, milkshakes. And we can also tame a wild boar. Can you stop talking 
<laughs> Sorry, that's my 21 year old adopted British son. I adopted him when I was 20 and he was 15. It was the closest age gap adoption ever performed. You want me to start talking? I'd like to watch Shrek the Third. And I'd like you to call me Donkey. I told you just because you watch Shrek the Third all week doesn't mean I'm going to refer to you as Donkey now. Why not? I like that man. He's not a man, he's a donkey. Then why does he talk? It's a good point, actually. Why does he talk? My dad used to get so angry at kids. I don't want to paint my father. He, he drove me to a comedy show. This is a nice man. But he did used to get so, like, unnecessarily annoyed. Because, you know, like, parents, when you're a kid, they take you to, like, kids' movies. And he'd be like, why are they talking? They're bears. Why? I'm like, Dad, I don't care. <laughs> They're making me smile. He'd be like, it's just stupid. Why can't they just be people? I'm like, because people aren't furry, father. People aren't furry. He's like, I'm furry, look at my arms! I'm like, Dad, I know you have hairy arms. You can't keep screaming at me. None of that happened. None of that happened. None of, nothing even similar to that happened. Okay, so, you know how the new Jurassic Park movie is coming out? And I don't know if you're familiar with the celebrity Jeff Goldblum. If you don't know who he is, look him up. He's kind of like this quirky, like, he's got this sort of persona where he's like, ooh, yes, oh, I'm Jeff Goldblum. And he's pretty big movie star. He's in all the Jurassic Park movies. And I had been thinking about him recently because, like, he was on some shows I listened to where he was just kind of showing up. Like, even Carl's Jr. was, like, advertising the Jurassic Park movie with, like, take a big bite out of this dinosaur burger, which is just such a disturbing thing to me. This is not a sponsorship. Do do not get it twisted. This is an anti-sponsorship for the, the new Jurassic World movie. I actually think it'll make your life worse if you watch it. I looked it up. It's two hours and 40 minutes, by the way. Can you imagine watching Chris Pratt run around with dinos for 240? Maybe if it was a nugget, a dino nugget, a breaded piece of chicken. Anybody? Anybody used to eat that? Did anybody's mom used to... Why am I yelling at you about chicken nuggets? So, I was feeling annoyed with Jeff Goldblum. I was telling people, like, I don't like him. Does anyone, do you guys like him? Like, I feel like he's just, he's just, he's fake, and he thinks he's quirky, and is he even a good actor? And I was, it was kind of becoming like an obsession for me. That's something I'll do. Like, I'll, I'll get resentful of something that I, or someone I feel everybody else likes, but I don't like. And it's a way for me to, like, I guess position myself above people while also feeling like I'm left out, which is where I'm most comfortable. I don't know. These are all just the, this is what I do. I spend my time just focusing on the ways in, in which I'm flawed. And, and it's not selfish. It's not self-centered in any way because it's negative. So I was on Hollywood Boulevard, which if you've never been before, it's like, you know, they've got the Walk of Fame, the stars with the celebrities' names. It's kind of like Los Angeles ha I just squeaked. Los Angeles has this like block that almost looks like Vegas, but only for like one second. Like there's a McDonald's, there's like a little bit of lights, there's a chocolate shop, there's uh, wax figurines, and there's like gift sh Like there's not much there. People are like, ew, it's disgusting. It smells like pee. I actually like it. Almost any place in the world that people say smells like pee is like my favorite place. It, that, that place always ends up calming me down for some reason. So I was just happened to be walking down Hollywood Boulevard. And it does, it seems like the place that a tourist goes to like see a celebrity, but of course you're not going to because why would a celebrity go there? Not that day. I'm not kidding. I look at one, have you ever seen these double decker buses? Like they give like tours of like for, for the tourists to, to go on and like maybe see a famous place or whatever. Guess who was on top of the bus? By the way, is my nose super red right now? There's no air uh, purifier in here. <laughs> and I have the worst. I took up allergy test and dust mites showed up like I thought I was going to break the machine. Like it, I am so allergic to dust mites. I really feel like you should feel bad for me. I just want to make that clear. If Chris Pratt could if anyone could possibly convince Chris Pratt to make a video with a dinosaur apologizing to my nose. So I see Jeff Goldblum on the top of the bus, and I'm not kidding, like the day before I had seen a big billboard of him and gone, I don't like that guy. But of course, in that moment, talking about this feeling of just, the even one that I don't like, the power of celebrity, there's just something so exciting about it. Like again, the fact that I could go, ah! and Jeff Goldblum would be like, is our dinosaurs real? I thought that was a movie. You know, like, why do I want to, I, I think I want to be a wild boar so badly. 
Somebody comment about the wild boar. And I saw him there. I think I took a video. He was filming something for Jimmy Kimmel. And by the way, so this is what happened. They're like filming and everyone on the street starts like noticing. Like, is that Because he's he wears these like crazy shirts. And I'm, I just stopped and I just looked. And they were filming us. Like I knew it was for Jimmy Kimmel because the... I don't know if you've watched Jimmy Kimmel. He has a guy on the show named Guillermo. Guillermo was up there. They're turning the camera to us, to the audience outside. Because everyone's... And like, I'm like, I'm going to be on Jimmy Kimmel tomorrow. I've been... This was like a few weeks ago. I don't know. I guess they cut it. I literally, they turned the camera and I did like a little dance move, but I didn't want to be like too obvious about it. I was like, should I be vlogging right now? Like what's happening? Of course, all the while, five minutes ago, I said, I don't like Jeff Goldblum. The second I see him, I'm like, Jeff, Jeff, no way. Jeff, you mean a lot to me. Jeff, Jeff, I. So embarrassing. Anyway, those are my two stories. I hope you like them. I wrote down some other stuff to talk about. Uh, I was going to talk about a, a call I had with like a therapist type person, but I also told them about my YouTube channel because they asked what I do for a living. So now I, I'll say it on my Patreon. I don't want to, by the way, um, I don't know. Okay. One second. Wait, no, I got to make a milkshake. Chocolate this time. And so, you know what I do? You know what my specialty at Denny's is and actually why they've kept me on the job for so long? I mix the chocolate with the vanilla. If my customers are so inclined and I call it a uh, chanella and they die. By the way, I just remembered I interrupted myself when I, was, I had a little bit more to say about what happened when the comedian was um, making fun of me. Um, and I guess not making fun of me, but attempting a conversation that looking back, I didn't I don't think I even let him have with me. It wasn't the fact that he called me a girl or, or, or a woman. I have to work on that because my mom actually called me out on that recently because I like I, I called some I was watching a band and I was like mom there's a girl in this band or <laughs> that sounds like an insane thing that's the kind of things I say to my mom mom there's a girl in the band she has long flowing hair but she's playing a bass guitar can you believe it and she goes oh oh she's a girl I said there's a girl in this band she went is she seven drew a girl and I was like, okay, mom, fair point. But then I was thinking about it afterwards. If you were, you, my viewer, just imagine this, don't get too excited. If you were in like a long-term relationship with a woman, a woman, what would you call them? Your girlfriend. I'm being annoying. But anyway, it wasn't that, and it wasn't the fact that he talked about my hat. It kind of was, but it was that, I don't know if you have moments like this. I hate... It's weird because like the battle within myself is I was going to say I hate feeling like a freak, but I also love it. You know what I mean? Like I, I love feeling like a weirdo freak, but the second that I feel like it in the wrong scenario or I feel like someone's seeing that as a negative thing, like I felt like the comedian, I felt like he looked at me and like, that's why I kept bringing up the fact that he like looked into my eyes is I felt like he was again, all in my head probably, that he saw me as like, oh, I shouldn't talk to this person. There's something wrong with them. Like the, the way that I said, I don't know, I just, I prefer wearing a hat. I prefer, he's like, oh, this is like an intense nerd that just need, shouldn't even be around people. Let's move on. I actually feel bad now. It would be morally wrong of me to inter, like that's how I was feeling. And again, I love being a weirdo, but it's also my least favorite thing. Does that make any sense? I need to stop. I don't like that hype. This chair is way too loud. Way too loud for content creation. Can we be honest on that? Also, can we be honest on the fact, is my nose crazy red? I feel like I'm making, I don't wear glasses in these. I still wear glasses, but the light like shines off of them. So I can't actually, no, see, that's normal. That's literally the most normal nose I've ever seen in my life. I've seen a more normal nose before. What, what nose did you see, British son? What was the normal, who, whose was it? Uh, his name's Donkey from, stop. Stop right there, I know exactly what you're gonna say. I was gonna say his name's Donkey from Shrek. I know. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything else to say. Anyway, that was a bad moment and, uh, I forget. Was that a jarring transition? I'm curious, are you still watching? I guess you'd have to be if you heard me ask that question. Unless somebody told you about me asking that question, which why would they? They'd be like, did you hear Drew Monson asked if you were still watching? Oh, really? Well, I wasn't. I stopped watching him in 2013. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll let him know. No, don't. He's sensitive. 
Well, why just, I, I, I don't want to hurt him just because I gave up on his content doesn't mean I want him to be hurt. Okay, I didn't realize you were such a good person. <laughs> Five minutes ago when you were screaming at me, it didn't seem like it. Why are we friends? I don't, honestly, I was waiting for you to ask that and I don't have an answer. I had to exit that closet. It was too stuffy in there. You felt it and I was worried about you because you run hot, my dear viewer. How are you for real? Tell me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ex no, I'm agreeing with, just keep going. I'm agreeing with everything you're saying. Exactly. No, for if they're gonna, yes, if they're gonna make you do two jobs, then they should be paying you two salary. Right, like if, you, if they're gonna promote you, then promote you. Otherwise, what are we doing? 100%, 100%. Sorry for screaming. I wanted just to tell you, I had a weird moment at Target the other day, which is strange in itself, because typically all my Target moments are quite normal. But I, tell me if this makes any sense to you, my decision-making process here. I heard all, you know when you just hear one thing from somebody? I heard a, a mom in like a very mom, kind of frustrated, but really not about anything specific, just like in a frustrated place in life and just, I need more sleep. I just heard her in the frozen meat section go, okay, what do you guys want to eat after you go swimming? Because I know you're going to be starving. And in that moment, I swear I decided like officially that I'm not going to have kids. I don't know what it was about. Does that make any sense? Because like, okay, it sounds amazing. Like the idea of like seeing someone take their first step and like learning how to clap or whatever, that's great. But the idea of like, being tired and walking around Target trying to figure out who wants mac and cheese and who wants top ramen and no, you already had too much like fruit snacks. That's, I could not. And I shouldn't put somebody else through that. Cause I had a dream the other day. I know I'm talking about my dreams a lot, but I had a dream <laughs> that my son walked. Have you ever had a dream that you had a kid? And you kind of, like, I walk around life thinking, I'll never have kids, I'm too selfish. I wouldn't know how to love it. But I had this dream where I swear to you, I felt love for this little boy walked up to me and he had my exact eyes, big brown bug eyes. And he, he opened them wide like it was one of my vlogs. And I swear I looked at him with, and I felt so much love and I was so excited to like teach him things and like learn <laughs> about myself through him. Wait, that's unhealthy. Anyway. And then I like saw the, the mom, like it was this woman I had gotten pregnant and I was like, didn't we go to school together? And she's like, yeah, I had your baby. You know when a dream starts to not make sense, but it always feels like in, in that kind of moment, I should have started lucid dreaming. Like I should have been like, oh wait, of, that doesn't make any sense that I have a kid and I didn't know about it and I barely know you. I'm dreaming, time to fly away from this kid. I'm, gonna, I'm about to do whatever I want. Let's go to Willy Wonka's chocolate factory even though it doesn't exist. Okay, I'm screaming so much in this video. I'm gonna go sing the song of the people who pay me more than $30 a month on Patreon, and I'll, I'll see you over there. <laughs> do, you have a, do you have a ride? I literally forgot, uh, not figuratively. I said in my last video, I read some comments from the video before, and I said that uh, on, on the, that one, if you comment, I'll read some on the next one, and this is that next one, and then you can comment on this one, I'll read some on the next one. This is all to increase engagement. I'm not gonna lie to you. Some YouTubers, they sit there and go, they go, I'm curious, what do you think? And there's 15,000 comments, and they have three kids. You think that I believe your skim, maybe they are. Actually, I believe that every YouTuber with kids, am I the only one who thinks any YouTuber I've ever seen with kids that is actively making videos like every day, you don't talk to those kids for a second. Those kids don't know your name. Now I'm starting beef. <laughs> every every uh, YouTuber parent knocks on my door at 7 p.m. tonight. We're ready to fight, brother. Okay, put down the spatulas, SpongeBob. That ain't a joke. Uh, okay, I've been screen... Oh, by the way, quick haul. The quickest haul you've ever saw. I got this at a thrift store yesterday. There's something uglyly beautiful about it to me. And I like stuff like that. It, remind it reminded me of something that I would... That would be, like, up at a library or a dentist's office. And I would, like, zone out while looking at as a child. Does that make sense? What's interesting to me about it is that it's a picture, it's a photograph of a bunch of fake stuff. Like, that ain't a real fish. That's a fish figurine. 
And like, I guess that's a real shell, but those look like fake flowers. There's just, it's clearly like a bunch of objects went to Macy's and did a photo shoot. I don't know. <laughs> There's something weird about it. And I took, uh, I took it home with me on the bus. It was $4. Just imagine a guy on the bus holding this. Nobody knows, nobody looks, nobody looks at what someone on the bus is holding. Except for me. I look at what, quiet, quiet son. I'm not even talking, not you. Thanks for putting me on the floor. I've never been on the carpet before. That's interesting. I just realized my, my British son has never touched carpet. People have been telling me to touch grass, but carpet, that's a new one. Son, don't try. You're not a comedian. And if I was, I'd roast the heck out of you. Silly little beanie boy. Son? Yes? It was, it was rhetorical? Okay. The first one, I screenshotted this comment, somebody said, somebody said, I feel like Doja Cat would watch you, but I read it, it this, yeah, I read it last night, and I literally thought it said, I feel like Doja Cat would scratch you, because of the word cat, and then what, and I was like, really, I was like, excuse me? I was like a little bit scared that they were right for a second. I feel like Doja Cat would scratch you. That made me laugh. I don't know about you. Uh, this was an interesting one. Someone said, Cosmo said, where's Wanda? Ow, that hurt. Drew, your singing makes me, <sighs> now I have carpal tunnel. <laughs> Drew, your singing makes me feel like something is about to happen. I just feel like that was poetic and I congratulate them for doing their best. Uh, I actually made a, a for the first time in my life, I've made a folder on my iPhone gallery, or an album. I've, it's called Comments. You ever made a, do you have gallery? Like you can name, you can make, I just had favorites before. You can do one called Dad, but just put selfies of yourself on there. Do you think any dads watch my videos? And not in a way of like planning how to kill me? Okay. Please do not, oh, I thought this was interesting because I talked about uh, the ethics of going to a thrift store because I saw some tweet of people saying that you shouldn't go to a thrift store unless, you're, uh, unless you don't have money. Please do, not make, please do not let people make you feel guilty for shopping at a thrift store. The thrift store I work at gets so many donations each day that the store physically does not have enough room for it. So the more people who buy from there, the less donations actually have to be thrown out or recycled. I thought that was interesting. So not only am I not a bad person for going, I'm a really good person. I'm just making room for that junk. Uh, oh, in my last video I talked about um, <laughs> my mom and I having a catchphrase, which I think I was just kidding, but I asked if other people have a catchphrase with their mom. And I got some moms watch my videos. Let's be completely real here. Uh, and someone <laughs> said, my mom, and, oh, my son and I, yeah, my son and I have a catchphrase. It's because we're Italian. And we, because we're Italian! And we say it randomly all the time. We are not, in fact, Italian. So fun. That just made me laugh. Uh, but I, I read it again just now, not laughing. The laughs are over. Can I be honest with you? I um, upped the dosage on my antidepressant two days ago with doctor approval. And I don't know if you take these types of meds, but if you start one or go up on one with doctor approval, you get this like three month boost if you're lucky, and then it goes away and you're like, nothing works. But for a little bit there, you start flying. I'm not talking like you're inebriated by it, but inebri inebriated off the Lexapro. As if, queen. Don't say that. Uh, okay, my mom and I have a catchphrase. Anytime one of us says anything even slightly annoying or melodramatic, we say, Okay, pussy lady. I don't know where it came from or who pussy lady is, but that's our cue to stop saying words. I thought that was really interesting. That's from Unicorn Steaks. Uh, this one I just got yesterday because I was looking at new ones. Is anyone watching this on their school's iPad? I need to know. I feel like no one is. And I, I, I'm just really curious about some kid like in their bedroom, like I need to relate to somebody on the most specific thing I can think of, watching Drew Monson videos on a school iPad. I honestly can't support that. You need to recognize that school iPad as the educational tool that it was meant to be. Steve Jobs is dying for nothing because of the behavior you're exhibiting. 
Just kidding. Oh my god. Oh my god, you're crying! Oh my god, where's my handkerchief? That felt hurtful. Anyway, uh, now I'm scared to leave. But none of this is real. I'm alone in my room. I'm gonna upload this video today? So if you're watching this when it was posted, this is what I look like right now! Unless I hit my head on the table and I'm bleeding from my teeth. Ew! God, I always go violent. Hello? Oh, sorry, I, I thought you died. Again! Okay. You're about to get like the raspy edition of this song, I believe, because of where my voice is at right now. I don't even know if you can tell, but maybe it'll be sultry, like you've always wanted. Like a, like a chocolate vanilla swirl. Clearly I'm jonesing to make another milkshake. I'm gonna talk for longer on Patreon, as I always do, if you wanna look at the, all the videos that are on there. I did a birthday haul on there last week, like showing off my presents, and it was fun, but afterwards I was like, who am I? Am I a teenager in 2014 showing my gifts to the world? Gift? Some words are harder to say than you would expect, for me at least. Try saying gifts right now and tell me that those sounds don't contradict each other. An F sound and then a T sound and then an S sound? Gifts? That's just a mistake. Somebody wrote that down wrong and was too embarrassed to admit it. Like, really? Gifts? No, I don't know. I don't know. Sorry. I, I, I don't want to go to work anymore. Okay, Tom, you're fired. No longer Anne Yizzy Jane May Forrest Brock Criss Cross Bay Can't wait. By the way, Criss Cross... Criss Cross. Does anyone tell you, Chris Crosby, did anyone ever tell you your name? So they must have. And you're mad? K. Ritter, Joe Wilson, Isabel Morales, yeah, yeah. Your name's not Isabel Morales. I need to stop. Moonlit Monson. so hard. Andy, Becca, Mixie Sticks, Meg, Sarah Jane, Pierce, Pierce, Riley, Radford, Marin Shahan, Leon, Leon, Domla, Kenya, Riley, Curie, Olivia Brown, Kathy Gans, Cousin Maybe. Do you think that Cousin Maybe feels like pressure because they're the end of the song to not unsubscribe because it'll change? Like, I'm not encouraging you to stop giving me money, Cousin Maybe, because maybe I don't even deserve it, Cousin Maybe I don't. But I just want you to know that you're free. You can unchain yourself at any time. You're free. Fly away, little birdie. Fly away, little maybe. I talked, see, now I feel like I'm giving more attention to one per Why do I always turn it into like I'm the dad? I'm giving more attention to one of what? One of my children? I'd be jealous though. Chris Crosby, Kay Ritter, Joe Wilson. See. Thank you. I'll see you on the other thing if you want, I don't know. Do you want me to do a dance for real?
the way down when you snap, it's fun. All the way down when you snap, it's fun. When you're done with snapping, you gotta fall, fall. Fall to the ground and snap on the floor. I'm just gonna stretch. Is it legal to just put this on YouTube? Like, there's no rule against that, right? You don't have to do any, you don't even have to breathe. Actually, maybe that would be illegal to upload a video of somebody not breathing. Why'd it turn into a scary movie? <laughs>